in this program, I'm going to write a method on my uh, robot op mode that is going to have a smarter sleep. So I already have an autonomous mode, and it's called TestBot Simple Auto. I create the robot, and I have a run op mode method. Inside of it, I initialize the hardware map, wait for start, and then here's the real autonomous code where I drive forward, I park, and then I move my servos some. To control how long I drive or how far I drive, I've been using the sleep function, which I tell the robot to sleep for a certain number of milliseconds. But what happens if I want to stop the robot with the, the phone because maybe it's going crazy? Well, the original template that I followed had code for that. You can see that it's right here. They, they get the runtime and they check to see if the op mode is active while also checking that it runs for a certain amount of time. So I'm going to copy that code. And I'm going to go back to my uh, program, my, uh, my autonomous. And I could replace the sleep every place where I sleep. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a method for this class. I'm going to make new code that I can use over and over to write your own function or method first you need to say if it's a method if it's public or private in my case it doesn't really matter it can be public next you want to have it indicate what you'll return and in this case I'm not going to return anything so it's called void next you need to put the name of the function and then in parentheses, you need to put any arguments that you're going to feed the function or method. Then you're going to use curly braces. And inside those curly braces, you're going to put the code that you want to execute. All right, so making a public method. I'm not returning anything, so I take the word void, and I'm going to call this smart sleep. And there is a piece of information I need to feed it. I need to feed it the number of seconds I want to sleep. And that uh, argument is going to be a double. In other words, it can be a decimal. I put my curly braces, and then this is where i got to put that code that I copied from the other program. So I'm going to have runtime reset. What that code's doing is the runtime that's belonging to this op mode is going to be set back to zero. Now we're in the while loop, and this is why this is a smarter sleep, because immediately in this while loop, we're checking that there are two things that are true. The first is the op mode active. And we do this by checking this method. And then we have two ampersands that mean and. And what we're doing after that is we're comparing is the seconds less than the number of seconds we wanted to sleep. Now we're inside this while loop. And we run this code over and over while both conditions are true. And in this case, the code on the inside is just telemetry, printing to the phone what's occurring. So that's it for that uh, method. Now we can go in and replace our old sleeps with our smarter sleep. And it's in seconds, so I don't need to type 1,000. If I want to sleep for a second, I type 1. And I replace the places where it says sleep. And that's it. Let's test it out. All right, this first one, I'm going to run it and let it run like normal. All right, I'm going to run it again, and this time I'm going to stop it as it's driving so it won't be able to move the servo at the end. As you can see, the robot stopped and didn't move the servo down like it was supposed to. This is the advantage of the smart sleep. It won't keep running the code if you press 
the stop button.